Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Once again, working on the 1974 Dodge Power Wagon. Next up, right here. I need to mock up all of the stuff that sits on the front of this engine. Water pump, uh, power steering, alternator, all of that kind of stuff. Need to get everything aligned for the belts. I need to also figure out, you know, what bolts, brackets, all of that. I need, probably going to have to do some fabrication. I'm going to warn you at this point, if you are one of those purists that get triggered when you see like an LS swapped into a Mopar, you're probably going to want to avert your eyes now because this is not going to be original. Let's get to it. If you're doing this kind of swap, there are a whole bunch of things that you have to keep in mind. The first thing is this is a Magnum engine. So it originally came with a serpentine belt. So the first thing you have to decide is, well, are you going to keep the serpentine or go with a V-belt? I actually am opting to go back to a V-belt system. At least that's my current thinking. I might be able to go with a, you know, a flat style belt working like a V-belt, so without a tensioner. The reason for all of that is this Magnum came with, you know, the brackets and everything on it. But it had originally air conditioning, and the air conditioning bracket has this big old piece up here that actually gets in the way of the filler neck, and it's really ugly. This is not going back with air conditioning, so I didn't want to deal with any of that. So I basically just took the whole front end, everything from the front of the block forward, and scrapped it. So this is an LA older style uh, timing cover, and so this takes this style of water pump. You cannot interchange the two types of water pumps because they spin in opposite directions. So this one spins in the direction of rotation of the motor. The serpentine belt style spins in the reverse. So the water pump needs to match the timing cover. Next, we have to figure out what we're going to do for a lower pulley. I've got this lower pulley. This is off of probably a 318. Uh, honestly, I don't really know. Can't recall where it came from. But I need two groove. I need one for the uh, power steering pump and one for, you know, water pump over to the alternator. So this is the lower pulley here. This goes down on the crank. The next decision is the alternator. And this is the one that's going to trigger people. Let's go over to the bench and take a look at what I'm working on. So here are a couple of old school, old style Chrysler alternators. This one is from the late 60s. This one is from the uh, early to mid 70s. The way to tell the difference really is to flip them over and look at the back. This late 60s one has a single field terminal and it's kind of this, I don't know, heart shaped uh, place here where the rectifier is. This other field is just grounded directly to the case. The voltage regulators on these, I've got one laying around here somewhere I could probably show you. Actually, let me go grab it. There you go. That's what the voltage regulator for this old style works. You can swap to the newer one and do some wiring changes, but this is basically, it's purely analog and, well, they aren't uh, terribly reliable. The newer style, they moved from this to this style. This one has a dual field in this large square rectifier bridge area. That is really the, the large change. It changed the voltage regulator to a solid state, and so it's got two field wires. One for energizing and one goes back to that voltage regulator and it opens and closes it. Basically it acts as a resistor to energize the field. Regardless of how they work, the things to know, if you've driven old Mopars, you'll know at idle, these charge for shit. I mean, your lights will sit there and flicker, and it just, they don't work very well at idle. They also don't put out a whole lot of amperage. For the size of them, you would think that they would uh, put out some current, but, you know, this is 1960s technology, probably designed in the early 60s, maybe even the 50s. So you can't expect these things to be fantastic. The other problem is, again, you've got to have a remote voltage regulator um, and 
the the power system on these things is just uh, it's just not very good. I just don't like them. I mean, I know how to work on them. I can take these apart. I can rebuild it. I can make these things work just fine. But if I'm going back brand new on everything, I don't see any point in putting garbage like this back in. Oh, sorry. Classic antique uh, electronics like this. Let's call it that. One option is to go with a standard Delco Chevy alternator. Those actually work pretty well. Um, they've got the voltage regular built into them, which is really nice. They also tend to charge better at uh, lower speeds, but they also aren't terribly reliable. They, uh, the front bearing on them is kind of a, a weak point on those alternators. And they are also big. If you get one, they are this big at least, and they actually have a higher uh, amperage output one that the case is even bigger. And I'm trying to not go gigantic. So what I actually am going with is this. And look at the size of that compared to the size of this. This has about 50% more output than this one. These ones have a really good set of bearings in them, front and rear. They tend to uh, drive at a higher speed without problem, and they just tend to be more reliable. Not surprising, Toyota makes pretty reliable stuff and they always have. The other nice thing is, it's got a built-in voltage regulator. So really, there's two wires here, but I can probably get away with a single wire. One is the sense and one is the, uh, the charge. It's got a third wire in here that's to full field it for testing. I'll go over how this gets wired in a completely separate video when I get around to the wiring of the engine compartment. That's going to be a ways into the future. For now, I just need to get this thing mounted up with the uh, V-belt aligned for all of the other stuff. So let's go see what has to happen to make all of this stuff fit. So far, it's going much easier than expected. I just used a couple of bolts to hold this lower pulley on. Again, I've got to take everything off to get it cleaned. I'll probably get uh, this pulley in the fan, powder coated, things like that. Right now, I'm just trying to get everything set up because I know I'm going to have to fabricate some brackets. But you can see here, if I zoom in, these pulleys and these pulleys line up perfectly. Not a surprise, I'm pretty sure that these are from... I don't even honestly know what they're from. They're from some motor, an LA, probably. They may have even been from the same motor. The nice thing here is this fan is also pretty close to the radiator there. I'd say... You know, four fingers, so it's probably about three inches or so. With the shroud, that should give some really good cooling as well. Let's swing around to the other side and figure out this alternator, though. That's going to be the challenge. So we've got to have some brackets to hold it in place uh, and probably some spacers to make sure that the pulley on that alternator aligns with the outside pulleys on this. I think I mistakenly just said that we have to line up the alternator with the outer pulley. We have to go to the inner because you can see this power steering pump lines up perfectly with all the outers. Again, this has got to get cleaned up and replaced or rebuilt because I have no idea what the status of that thing is. But the power steering lines up to the forward uh, groove for the pulleys. So we need to figure out how to line up this rear groove for the alternator back here on the other side. One thing working in my favor here is since this is a Magnum motor and I've got an electric fuel pump, I'm just blocking this plate off. So I actually have a ton of space right here for this alternator. What that means is I have to figure out the spacing from here to its mount point on the head so that this lines up with this groove. Nicely, I've got lots of spots here. The head has four different bosses. I guess five if you counted this really low one. I won't be using it, but I'll be using one of these. Right now, I'll just figure out what the distance is and get it mounted. Then we can worry about which hole kind of gives us space. The dipstick comes out right here, so I want to make sure I've got space for that to come up. If I measure from here to the center of the groove of the pulley, 
Let's see if I can get it here. It's about three and three quarters of an inch. And on this head, it's basically six inches from here to the center of that groove. So I need a spacer that's two and a quarter long with a hole in it. If you're familiar with Mopar alternators, you're familiar with the tubes that typically go in between the ears on the alternator. Thinking I can find one of those and cut it to length. Man, talk about my lucky day. This original bracket here, I'll show you where that goes in just a minute. But this, plus this original spacer that I have, combined is basically two and a quarter. So that spacing is exactly what I need already. I'm going to go clean these up on the wire wheel before I uh, bolt them on here. I'm starting to think I should have bought a lottery ticket today. This is just a factory bracket, maybe off of an A body, maybe off of a truck. doesn't really matter. It's off of an LA. And then this lower, and then this spacer. So let me swing you around so we can see it a little bit better. You can see right here we've got a bunch of play. So I'm going to have to put a spacer in here. I mean, you could do it with a bunch of washers, but I'll probably turn something down on the lathe. I'll need another one down here. Doesn't need to be as large because this lower bracket's in it. We are really close to lined up here. I think it has to come this direction, but probably only about a sixteenth of an inch, which could be done with uh, a washer or something right in here. I could make this a little bit longer or I could put a washer in. We'll see what kind of mood I'm in when I get to it. This is pretty chewed up so I'll probably make a new one since I'm going to be making spacers for these. It'll be easy enough to add another one here. But really I think if we create a spacer here that my guess is about an inch and about three quarters of an inch and then this one needs to probably be about an eighth to a quarter longer. And I think all of that will fit. Now, the one other thing, well, I guess two other things to be uh, cognizant of. One, because this is a Nippendenzo, this is metric. So I will probably drill this out and helicoil it to a standard just so that everything on here is the same. I don't have anything necessarily against metric, but I don't really want to have one metric bolt with the, the rest of everything on here being SAE. The other thing that you have to be aware of is back here. This is where that plug goes in for the alternator. Here's the exhaust manifold. So the exhaust manifold sits right here. This cannot swing down a whole lot more or this plug is going to be in the way. I don't have bolts for this right now, so I'll just have to hold this up. But you can kind of see when that sits there, we're clearing it pretty well above right here. Gonna have to make sure you do wire management so it doesn't burn the wire, but it needs to be up near the top of its travel here in order for this to clear the manifold. So when I get it all assembled and I measure for belts, I need to make sure that this is on and this plug is in before I do any belt measuring, otherwise I might end up too short. So I'll go do some machining and uh, we'll see how we're doing. So I've got these cut this one is three quarter, that one's half inch, this one's two and three eighths. They're about three eighths diameter with uh, the whole size, I don't know, whatever size it takes to get that bolt in. I think it's probably a seven sixteenths bolt. So, oversized the hole from seven sixteenths. Obviously, I still need to get the belts, but I have to rebuild the power steering pump before I can do that, get that all done on this side. But the alternator is in and ready to go. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.